Hello, my name is Buddy Childress and I'm Executive Director of Needles Eye Ministries. We are really happy to have you with us today for our monthly speaker series. We hope you enjoy it. Well, it's good to be here with you this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, you guys kind of got excited when he mentioned that I was part of the first graduating class of God when I didn't know it was that exciting. But, uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, okay, I was part of it. Just barely, by the way, I graduated uh, with a 1.7 GPA, which uh, was probably the first of many miracles in my life. Test, are we good? Test, hang on. We're good? Okay. And there's the second miracle. But uh, uh, I actually uh, have written more books than I read in high school. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know too many people who can say that. But... Um, we are really excited to be here. It's been a wonderful two weeks and this final uh, uh, sharing. Just, uh, just so glad to be in Richmond. We live in Israel, and um, if you would like to stay in touch with us, we do have a sign-up sheet on the table in the back there. You can put your name, address, your email address. Sometimes the need uh, for prayer can be immediately, so if we can contact you via email. We don't give those addresses out. We, we uh, guard those. Uh, and guard your privacy, but we'd love to be able to stay in touch with you. We also have a website called messiahsmandate.org, or if you just plug in roncantor.com, it'll take you there. And we just put up a video the other day of our middle daughter. We're very proud of her. She just finished her basic training uh, for the Israeli Defense Forces, and uh, she'll be starting her two-year mandatory service uh, in about a, well, she's already started, but she'll actually be in her function in just a couple weeks. So you can keep her in prayer. Her name is Yael, and she is a wonderful young lady. You can also find us on Facebook, and uh, I'm sure you can figure out uh, how to find us there. Just plug her name in there. Well, it is good to be here, as I said, and I just want to tell you a story. That's what we're going to do today. I'm going to share with you the story about how I became convinced that Yeshua was the Jewish Messiah. I put my timer on because Buddy says if I go over, I don't get to eat, and I'm hungry, so uh, we will not go over time today. But um, when I was 18 years, well, let me just go back a little bit. Before that, I'm raised Jewish. I was bar mitzvahed when I was 13 years old, and while being Jewish was extremely important to me, I wasn't uh, terribly religious. It was more of a cultural thing. Uh, I don't know if I ever believed in God. I can remember sitting around in my room literally wondering if there was anything else out there, uh, if there was something beyond this life. And, and I wondered about it probably more than most people. Is it so many just live their life. They go in day in, day out. They don't think about eternity. But even as a teenager living my life for myself just to have fun and enjoy it, I wondered, was there something more? And I concluded that there probably wasn't. I couldn't see God. I couldn't hear God. Uh, and I went along with life. But when I was 18 years old, or rather 17, uh, my best friend, a fellow by the name of Brian McRae from Richmond, came to school one day, and uh, over a period of time, I could see that there had been a change in his life. And I began to ask him about it, and he told me that he now believed in Jesus. Now, you have to understand something, uh, at least from my perspective as a Jewish young man, I didn't know that everybody who called themselves Christian wasn't necessarily a Christian. Do you understand that? I just assumed if somebody, and being Jewish, everyone I knew who wasn't Jewish was Christian. But what happened to Brian was radical. It changed his whole life. And I could see that whatever he believed wasn't what all these other people that I hung out with in my high school believed. There was something different about him. And, and I really didn't care because it didn't have anything to do with me. I'm Jewish. And I said, Brian, that's great for you. Have a nice life. Uh, whatever. Goodbye. Uh, but Brian was very persistent, and uh, he constantly pursued me, and uh, we would have conversations. And, but again, it was outside looking in. That's good for you, Brian. In fact, every day at the lunch table at school, everybody remembers your lunchtime at school, and you'd sit in your little cliques, and we'd have our little group of friends. And, and Brian and another friend, Jimmy, would be arguing with 10 or 12 other people about the reality of God, about the reality of the good news of Yeshua. By the way, Yeshua is the Hebrew word for Jesus. That's what his mom 
uh, Miriam, which was her name, uh, called him. But they would argue about the reality uh, of God, reality of the kingdom of God, of eternity. And I would, it was like a spectator sport. I was like watching a, a ping pong match. They'd say something, he, but it had nothing to do with me because I'm Jewish. And, and one day, uh, Brian began to talk to me, and I said, Brian, listen. I really don't know what I believe. I, you know, I went to Hebrew school. I, I had studied certain things, but I didn't know what I believe. But Brian, I definitely know what I don't believe. And I don't believe in Jesus, so leave me alone. Well, one day we got in a discussion, and I said, Brian, are you trying to tell me that if I'm not born again like you, I'm not going to heaven? And to be honest, that sounded like a pretty arrogant belief, uh, that his way was the only way. And, and he looked at me, and he said, yes. You must be born again. And I, I knew he was telling me the truth. It was literally like somebody opened my eyes. Like I was looking, uh, 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 like the, uh, there was a shade down and someone opened it up and I could see. But I, I didn't like what I could see. And I said, no, no, Brian, this cannot be true. And, and I said to him, again, 1.7 GPA, read one book in high school. Uh, I looked at him and I said, Brian, there is nothing in the New Testament about being born again. And I said it with such confidence, uh, having never read the New Testament, <laughs> nor the Old Testament for that matter. Uh, Brian, took out his Bible and opened it up to John 3, 3, where Yeshua says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And that was shocking to me. There it was in black and white. And even though I didn't know if I believed in God, it was a, a, a revelation. It was, I knew it was true. And I said, no, this cannot be true. And I, I, I ran from it. And, and even as I was running from it, at the same time, I was wondering, because at 18 years old, I did want to know what truth was. Now, here's what, what, what is amazing, and I know we have uh, probably in this room people who work in the banking industry. We have people who are retired, who have spent their whole life getting ready for a portion, a season of time that lasts anywhere between six months and 20 or 30 years. We, we've all heard stories of somebody retiring, and then, you know, a week later, a month later, they're gone. They got bored. They couldn't enjoy life without work. And yet they spent their whole life getting ready for that one moment in time. Now, was that funny? <laughs> they, get, they spend their whole life getting ready for that one moment in time. And yet those same people so often don't think about eternity. Now, I'm not saying that it's not responsible to be ready for retirement, but I am saying that it is irresponsible to live 70, 80, 90 years on earth and not earnestly ask, is there something more? Is there truth? Is there something I'm missing? Because everyone in this room is going to slip into eternity. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be in 50 years. But life is a terminal disease. We're all going to die eventually. The question is, are we ready? And at 18 years old, I wanted to know what is truth. So on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, 1983, I decided that I would do something very radical. I would fast. Uh, many of you know that Jewish people fast on the Day of Atonement in order to be forgiven of our sins. Now, if you read in Leviticus 23 and as well as in Deuteronomy, the purpose of the Day of Atonement was not to be a day of fasting. Fasting was merely the, the posture of humility in which we approached a holy God. But the, 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 the main focus of Yom Kippur in the Old Covenant was a goat that was to be sacrificed. There always has to be an innocent being that takes on this. You see, you, you can't get somebody guilty to suffer for your own sins. If I get arrested for murder, and then some other murderer comes and says, hey, I'll take Ron's punishment. No, sorry, pal. <laughs> You're guilty too. It has to be someone innocent. So on Yom Kippur, I decided that I would fast. And I fasted, and after 24 hours, um, I, I didn't feel any closer to God. I felt very hungry, uh, and, uh, and I ate, and ate, <laughs> and ate. Uh, and over the next months, I still wondered, uh, is there a God? Is there reality? And in October of 1983, um, I came home to, uh, to Richmond. I was in Lewisburg Junior College at that time. And I came home for a fall break. And while I was home, I saw my friend Brian. And of course, Brian was talking again about Jesus. And um, 
I said, Brian, just tell me one thing. And I, let me explain something to you. There were two things that would keep me from embracing Yeshua. Number one is the fact that I was Jewish. I understood that, that this would be painful for my family. I understood that it would be uh, uh, embarrassing in the community. 